It might take an event in our life for us to really open up our eyes. But at that point, guess what? It's too late. We've been given such a gift of life. We've been given such a gift of the knowledge of Christ and what Christ did for us as the people of God. And yet, we think, oh well, I've been forgiven and I know Christ forgives me again. I've been redeemed and I can confess my sins again because I know I'm going to sin, so, so it all is okay. And, huh. Suddenly we might find ourselves like the rich man at the end of our lives and go, oh wait, hold on, maybe I didn't listen quite as well as I thought I did. We've got to listen to what we've been called to do as a people of God. And we can't listen the 800th time we've been told you got to try to listen the first time. Because otherwise, we continue to perpetuate the sin in this world. Sin's a, sin's a weighty word, isn't it? We don't even like using it in the Lord's Prayer version that we do here. I don't know why it's a southern thing that I don't get. We don't use the word sin. For sin is missing the mark. That's the closest way of understanding it in a theological sense. It is missing the mark with which God has set for us. Missing the bullseye. That's what it's called in archery, in archery terms. The bullseye, if you miss anything outside of that perfect bullseye, it's called sin. And God gives us a really good and big and large bullseye, my friends. All we have to do is confess our faith and believe and act like we do. Christ gives us very few commands in the Gospels. Those commands being, you should know these, my friends. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, body, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then he tells us at the Lord's Supper to do this in remembrance of me. That's another command, another ordinance. And then he also says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Spirit. That's it. And do we listen? We didn't listen when we got the Ten Commandments. Did we? And even when Christ took those Ten Commandments and compacted them down into two simple phrases, we still struggle to listen. So he elaborates a little bit more and he gives us all of these wonderful parables and stories and ways of living. And yet, do we listen? See, as people of God, I think that sometimes we get so caught up in the semantics of how that we forget to just do. We really, really like context. We like to put a caveat on anything. I've seen some wonderful illustrations of, you know, love your neighbor, but 
or well, I'm a really good person, but sometimes you want to kick butt in the butt, right? Or I meant to do really good, but that's my favorite one. Well, I would have hit her, but she hit me first. We hear that a lot in my house. Owning up to our own responsibilities, our own sin, is probably one of the hardest things for us to do. Because when we hear these words, we don't necessarily take them into ourselves. We take them and say, well, they apply to me. Of course they apply to me. But this person needs it more. Right? But, my friends, we're not three years old. We're not even ten years old. Some of us wish we would be more near the twenty range. 30. Maybe you would like the wisdom that we have now in the body of a 40 year old. Would that be an okay, okay one? You know. I don't know. I haven't hit that point yet, so I like where I'm at now. But the scripture is troublesome in so many ways. Because how many of us have the good life? Or a life that we're at least satisfied with. We have food on our table. We have a car to drive. We might not have a lot of gas in our gas tank, but that's an anomaly for right now. And how many of us have someone at our doorstep like Lazarus. Might not necessarily be full of sores or wounds and being licked by dogs. That's not the world we live in. <clears throat> but who is outside of our walls and our doors, some of which we erect ourselves? be the Lazaruses of today. Because we right now receive many, many good things in this life. We have many privileges that some do not have. Yet at the end of our lives, if we end up on one side or the other, it is up to us because all we had to do was listen. And at the end of our lives, once it's all said and done, we can't go back. The rich man sits there and goes, I beg you to send someone to my father's house and let my brothers know so they do not end up where I am. The response is too late. You've heard it over and over and over again. So don't let it be too late. Don't forget to share the good news that you're aware of now because at the end of the day, at the end of the road, at the end of our lives, it is too late. We should have listened the first time. Should have shared it the first time. 